decks, there's not much to choose, but Bend looked a little bit ropey on that Priest. I might have been tempted to leave it up because he quite clearly hasn't had quite enough time to get the nuances. All right, well, we are going to dive into then the winner's bracket final between these two guys. Big Ben versus Toast Monster. Two players who will definitely want to make to that grand final. Uh, but it's not going to be an easy feat because they've both been playing fairly well this tournament, but I'm sure that they think they could even play better. So maybe this will be the game that they actually start to pick it up a little bit. Control Warlock versus Priest. Bo, tell us about Control Warlock versus Priest because I'm sure it's a matchup we've all been dying to see. Yeah, so this is the matchup you really, really want to avoid as Control Warlock. Generally, Priest ha preys on slow decks. With the huge combo, with uh, once you've got Anduin down and Raza, you can burst from 30 with Velen, and the Control Warlock just doesn't apply any pressure to the Priest and gives it all that time. However, saying oh that, the, the Control Warlock, if you can get a down goal down on 10, sometimes you can get that pressure in, and it can be too much for the Priest. Yeah, I've seen people actually keeping Gul'dan in their opening hand. Is that something you subscribe to? We hasn't got the chance to do it here. Yeah, definitely. In, in any matchup where you're going to play Gul'dan, you definitely want to keep it. It's such a powerful mm. card with that hero power. I literally just watched Boar play Control Lock versus Priest, like downstairs, like maybe 10 minutes ago. Okay, I'll leave this one to you two, okay, then I'll just sit back and <laughs> you, you guys can... He he able to dirty rat out the Velen uh, and kill it off. You are able to burn things and you still lost the game as the Warlock. It was insane. So I think that this is going to be a very tough one for Ben indeed. Yeah, definitely. Dirty Rat, a very key card. We see the Raz in hand of Toast Monster. If Ben is playing Dirty Rats, that can be pulled out, and that changes the whole landscape of the game. Raza not being played means that the, that the Priest just can't do anywhere near that 30 damage combo. Right, and is the Geist relevant? I know it doesn't take that much away, but obviously Priest is saving up more and more. Yeah, the Geist, the Geist is a little bit relevant. If you can get the cards out of their hand, then it's quite strong, but if you're just removing cards from the deck, they can still do 30 damage without the Holy Smite, so it's not too much of an issue. It gives you a few percent, maybe. But you're actually getting them closer to the, the cards in some yep. situations, which is kind of amusing because you don't know which situation it's going to be, of course. Um, with that in mind, is there an ideal time for playing it, maybe? Just turn... Turn to six. Seven, or, yeah. or if you can have a read on their hand sometimes, sometimes they go for a Kazakus potion and it's for one to help their Venom, and then you can play it and get that, and that's a good mm. swing, but normally as early as possible to get rid of the cards uh, because they, he might just play them as Toast Monster side because he knows there's a Geist or very likely to be a Geist. So the other thing I think that's interesting, I was saying that Ben has been a little bit weak on his Priest. I wonder how hard people even bothered to practice their Warlocks going into this tournament. The players who hadn't had quite as much time as, as the top players who have to focus on their other decks. Like, if you're expecting it to get banned all the time, maybe he hasn't played it that much, although he is naturally a good, like, defensive player. I would imagine play people have practiced their decks a lot for this tournament. Or even the ones that are going to get banned yeah, out. Yeah, even the ones that get banned out. You practice everything lots. And like aggro decks, you, you, they're the sort of easiest ones to build. You probably put, sometimes you put more time into the control decks just to find the perfect 30 cards. Mm -hmm. So when you're, I'm going to keep just grilling you about how <laughs> you do things because you do things really well. Um, when you're building a lineup and you're building that control deck, like you say, you want to tweak with it more. How do you go about the fact that some of these matchups take 25, 30 minutes to get your to get your data together? Do you just literally grind out the hours? Yeah, just grind out the hours if you have as long, if you have the time, which I do personally since I'm full time Hearthstone. Right, and then obviously some of these guys have actually got like full time jobs and play. I mean, yeah. Ben admits he's it's the strongest hobby you could have basically. I mean, he puts a lot of time in, but he does have to nail down his job as well. Yeah. The advantageous position you have though is when players like Boar are playing, they stream as well, and if you don't have the time, you can just watch them play. And right. you can learn very similar and, things. And Boar's stream has been full of all of these players for two weeks solidly, which is obviously a disadvantage. That's to why you came top eight instead, yeah. isn't it? They all yeah. knew exactly <laughs> what you are going to be bringing. Yeah, so here we have the optimal time norm for Dirty Rat, the turn before Raza Chain can come down. He hasn't got a read on Raza. There's no kept cards that, that is clearly a Raza. He might try and hold the Dirty Rat for a Venom, which is much easier to hit. But I would like to see the Dirty Rat just come down here and hope for the Raza. It's one of the best ways you can win the game. Yeah, because after this single one turn, that's it. That's your one chance to get it. And Toast will definitely just dodge that situation. And this is the thing. I used to hate Dirty Rat as a card until these situations arose where you can actually change your matchup in your favor, and it's not just playing on turn, turn two as a defensive option and hoping you don't draw something significant from your opponent's hand. Yeah, so I imagine Ben was scared of maybe putting a Velen because he doesn't have an answer for it. However, 
the pros and cons, most of the minions are small in the priest deck. You're not too worried about putting them. Mm -hmm. And the, the pro of putting Raza is just so, so large that I definitely encourage you to play Rat on turn four if you can. Yeah, because you're, you're, it's such a really bad matchup for you as well. Yeah. So if you pull the Venom and lose, well, you're probably going to lose anyway. So exactly. not no harm done, but not too many percentage points thrown away. And if he hits this, it just makes things so messy. But the Priest can still actually win. We've, we've seen this with multiple things with Priest. He can get cards back. He can win without certain cards. Yeah. But definitely worth hitting it. Yeah, instead we see Ben going for that. Just on another note, it looks like he is playing the full control version. There's no cubes in here. Yeah. There's no... He's playing the guy, so that very much indicates, and the Stone Hills, that it is control, not cube, because cube can actually beat Priest with Doom Guards. That's, that's one way, but yeah, definitely here. It looks like only Void Lords as demons in this deck. Is that the version you'd expect people to bring? I mean, what, if you don't want to say, what did you bring? If you don't want to say, I understand, but... Yeah, I brought the control version the same as, same as Ben. Right. Obviously not card for card the same, but yeah, the very same similar. Theory. And do you, th do you think that's what most people would bring who are playing the non-zoo bluff strategy? Yeah, definitely. If you're expecting aggro, which everyone clearly was with their Galactic Caller lineups, you're going to bring the control version because it's better versus aggro. Right. And, <laughs> I mean, is the... Obviously, it's, it's the answer to this question is always yes, but in, in scale, how much more complicated is it than just getting down an early Void Lord against aggro decks? And this matchup, we've got plenty of time to talk about how this one's going to unfold. Yeah, it, well, th there's always complicated Defile turns and Hellfire turns, and then you want to play cards like Dirty Rat. There's always an optimal time to play that, and it's sometimes very difficult to, to work it out in every matchup. So Ben gave a bit of a nod after his Dirty Rat non-play earlier. He, I think he realised that was an option that he, he overlooked. And yeah, it's interesting to see what his game plan is. I imagine he's definitely going down the line of I want a dirty rat Velen and then kill that with a twisting nether on turn ten, potentially, or right. with a siphon soul on, on eight. And we'll see how this goes for him. He's hasn't really got the pressure in the early game. Sometimes you can get a Void Lord out on five with Lackey. He's holding back the Lackey here because he's scared of silence, scared of potion of madness. So he doesn't want to play it naked on board without actually getting a Void Lord out, which makes a lot of sense. Something I always have trouble with in this matchup myself is, I mean, the, the great thing with Hearthstone these days is there's no sort of, hey, this is the answer to this question, but is the timing of Psychic Scream. Uh, you can, you can choose to do it before they start getting all their stuff, or you can wait until after um, you're done and then put it all back in. Then what, what timing are you usually aiming for? Maybe in the board state we have right now, what would you be aiming to use the Psychic Scream on? Yeah, normally you just want to use them on the Voidos. It's all very situational, it depends or it's all context essentially. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's best to wait for the Gul'dan if you have the read that coin Gul'dan's coming down. And then other times you can just use it. If, if there's a, just a good board for it, you shouldn't really be turning it down. As well as in your hand, if you don't have anything better to do, sometimes it's just correct to play it. So being tricky with it is probably counterproductive. Yep. Just get on with it and do your priest things you're trying to do. Yeah, so Toast is trying to draw his whole deck as fast as possible here. Has no card draw cards in hand, doesn't want to waste, waste his resources, so just does nothing this turn. Yeah, what Toast is worried about, of course, is the pressure from Ben, because he know now he's seeing Geist, he's like, okay, that's one of my win conditions that is slightly decreasing. If he was to lose uh, a Velen to a Dirty Rat or something like that, he needs to find a way to still be able to find all that damage. And if he's as unlucky as Hello Lero was, and his Anduin is right at the bottom of his deck, then he might struggle from the pressure that Ben can provide with some of these kind of annoying minions like Void Lord. Yeah, one other thing to point out is that Toast has brought a very anti-aggro lineup. We see Doomsayer, we see Greater Healing Potion in this Priest deck. He has to have cut some cards. Has he cut Card Draw? Has he cut Mind Blast for Burst, maybe? Yeah, something has to have gone, and maybe he doesn't have the same Burst damage in the same draw, so this matchup is a bit worse for him than it normally is for a Razakas Priest on the ladder. Yeah, um, Binding Heal is always a card I quote in this situation, but maybe if you're playing that defensively, Binding Heal adds to all that rather than directly swaps. Doomsday Binding Heal doing very much the same thing, except that Doomsday doesn't cycle with your gadgets and your yep. live or whatever he plays. So, keep his health out. Does go for that five mana spell, so... Yeah, drawing two cards off that, which is exactly what he was looking for. Perfect scenario here. We'll actually get, start cycling through his deck, get closer to that Anduin. This can sometimes be a bit weird. It's not going to be here, but where you're trying to actually dump stuff out, especially when you do start playing those additional those doomsays, the cards you want to keep in your hand and mess around with, you can get in this situation where you don't want to play any of the cards out of your hand apart from the ones that replace themselves, and you can end up in trouble, right? Yep. So. Yeah, and we see Ben here finally gets to play his lackey and kill it on the same turn with this Hellfire, getting out his Void Lord, I imagine. 
Yeah. That's a mistake you see so often at lower ranks of ladder where people just play out their lackey and let it get silenced or stolen or something. So Ben setting that up nicely there, getting everything going properly. And the thing is now, Toast is probably going to want to keep this Void Lord in his hand because he will be worried about Dirty Rats happening. And the only other minions, what, he's got Pyromancer and Bell, and you want the highest possibility chance of them not being pulled. Yeah, definitely. It's interesting as well, because Toast might think that there is no Dirty Rats and we've left ha card, hand, left card of, his, of Ben's hand because he thought it might have been played on turn five yeah. or turn four for his Raza. So maybe he just has a read that there aren't Dirty Rats. Some of these control builds mm. are playing cards like Tainted Zeal a lot and they're not playing Dirty Rats. So we'll see what he does. And he does just play it. It is just a good body on board on turn nine, of course. Yeah, I mean, the Warlock plays it for a reason against things. In this game, actually, the Warlock is the aggro deck, sadly. So yeah, just slow it down. Slow it down as much as you can. Because the Warlock Mirror will go to Fatigue. If you go to Fatigue in the Priest versus Warlock, obviously your Priest in a great spot. Um, although running out of one drops. So he's going to have to hold on to one of these zero drops at some point, yeah, yeah. not both. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and from Ben's side, just tapping every turn. He needs to get this score down, as I said before. There's an Enzoth as well. The Enzoth can provide a lot of power onto the board, and without Psychic Scream, can sometimes just put enough pressure on the Priest to kill them as well. We see the Spellstone coming down here, seven damage, just straight through this Void Lord already, and start applying even more pressure. Maybe force an AoE from Toast Monster here. Yeah. Acti has double Dirty Rat in hand as well. Like, he must be feeling fairly confident at some point he can pull out this spell and, uh in the latter stages of the game when the deck starts to thin out ever so slightly. I mean, Toast should feel comfortable in this matchup, relatively comfortable, just yeah. saying, right, if I draw through my deck, I'm probably going to win. But what are the standout signs of how he loses the game? Is there anything he could do particularly wrong? Yeah, well, the ways, the ways he loses are too much pressure from the Warlock, and he's there's, he's fine, there's no pressure at all, basically. He, and the other way is he gets his, his, his Raza, um, Dirty Rad or his Velen Dirty Rad. So I imagine he's just going to make sure he keeps some cards back with the, with this Velen in hand as well. It's the only minion in hand at the moment, but he's going to be drawing loads of cards, so I imagine minions will be coming into the hand. Pretty sure that um, production just put all the Anduins to the bottom today to make it more exciting. <laughs> well, we had all the patches at the top yesterday, so it's only fair, isn't it? <laughs> they probably did that as well. Yep. Ooh, and there's the Gul'dan pickup for Ben. So next turn that can come down. If we can get this Void Lord to die, that'll be resummoned as well. And then the hero power, make sure that you're on 30 HP most of the time. And then you're just gradually grinding down that priest. If the DK is low enough in Toast Monster's deck, you can just pressure with the three damage per turn from the from the hero power. For and Gul'dan. 30 is the key number, right? Because 28 is easy. -ish. Well, well, not if Velen's gone again. Well, yes. And Geist as well. Oh, yep. of course. So it's actually down to 24 because of the circle. Yeah, so just staying on any sort of high number now. Yep, definitely. Yeah, more draw here for Toast Monster. He also has this potion, of course, which is draw. Just trying to maximize his draws. Doesn't want to end up overdrawing here. That would be disastrous as well. Yeah, remember there was the option here, given how late this has been played, to be a one mana potion for later. The, the guys had already gone. Yep. And so, just highlighting that is a decision that he made. Not saying it's right or it's wrong, just he wanted those cards rapidly. You were saying at the time that's what you would have done as well, obviously. But yeah. it was a one drop he was denying himself for later. Yeah, it definitely worked out well for him here. This resummon is just crazy. You're talking about pressure from the from the from the warlock side. There's now pressure just with minions from the priest side. So if you have the late game win condition and the pressure early, things are going very well for you. Yeah, and that pressure is one way to play around this dirty rat issue. If you can just hit ten off their thirty and then yep. just ping away at the rest, you can soon eat through all that healing and make a big, big difference. If ben does seem reluctant to play these dirty rats. Is there an optimal time during the late game for that you would want to play them? Is Ben tracking how many minions have been played by Toast and saying, all right, I'm ticking this one off the list, this one, there's only now four left in the deck kind of situation. Yeah, this is a, oh, we're just seeing here. I think Ben's going for the overdraw on the Acolyte of Pain, which is another way to win, overdrawing the Anduin. We'll just see if this happens quickly. We have seen Anduin be burnt once already today. A second time would be crazy. Oh. So that's the comeback mechanic gone. If he does hit the Anduin, that's the game. Yep. Um, because the Lyra is your one way of sort of trying to miracle your way back into it, which is what Ben was trying to do yesterday when he lost his Anduin. Yeah. 
Yeah, so back to the point about the Velen. I imagine Ben is tracking tracking all the cards. He knows all the minions in Toast deck. Mm. And then cards like Velen are going to be in your hand for such a long time. He can start making reads on which cards are what. And you can go like Mind Blast, cards like maybe Great Healing Potion, Psychic Scream. They're going to be in stuck in hand for the longest along with the Velen. And once he's very confident that, that, that one of the cards is Velen, I imagine that's when the rats come down. This is kind of the point I was mentioning earlier, by the way, where every card in your hand, you've got 10 cards in hand, and every card you either don't want to play or if it replenishes itself, we might see some sort of weird doomsayer here just to empty the hand. He doesn't really want to do this. It doesn't help him, except it makes some space to draw a card. The thing is, this opens up a Dirty Rat option now. Because the Doomsayer is on the board, that is a natural invite to say, right, yep, I'm going to play a Dirty Rat because it can kill whatever comes onto the board now. It's almost like Ben might think, because he doomsayed, he doesn't have anything good in his hand for me to Dirty Rat, so I won't Dirty Rat. Wow. It's almost a mind game here from Toast to some extent, uh, in terms of respecting your opponent to some extent, but we'll but see what, what two of them. does. He does. He's also not sure. There's a lot of cards left. Velen could still be in the deck. Yeah, I think with two of them, I think I'd be really tempted to throw one of them out there and just take a shot at it because you're over halfway through the deck. Yeah, of course, with Cast Division, we can see it in hand, but Ben isn't. Oh! The Glutton Azuz was drawn after the Defile. Oh, he was trying to get it into the hand. But Ooh, now he gets it. He, he does get both. it. Okay. So a really, really important dirty right there from Ben. If he had just stopped there and played the, just the one, then we would have been like, eh, you could have played the two, but... And as Bull was saying, that was with Cast Division, we could see it quite yeah. clearly. Ben had to sit there and think, D is it my time? Yeah, so two very key turns here. The Venom is gone, but without Gul'dan on, online, Yet, Toast can see I can actually just pressure enough pings per turn. You can do like five pings per turn mm -hmm. and then just whittle down the Warlock. And that can be enough if he can just have enough time to do it as well. But we can also see the cooldowns going to slow that process down. Five armor to start with and three per turn really makes it a slow grind to get there. But we do see that Ben's hand has nothing in it, yeah. apart from Gul'dan, obviously. Yeah, the two Twisty Nethers are essentially useless this matchup. Hellfire can be used for some final damage. And Spellbreaker, you normally use that to silence the death rattles on the card draw cards. But I think we've seen all the card draw pretty much that, that's come out. So Spellbreaker, pretty useless. This looks like a psychic screen. Yep. And we're just going to see for the second time in two matches, I think, the, the chance that the Anduin just runs out of, of fuel. Yeah, essentially. Toast has a lot of damage left. If he is playing the Mind Blast, which I assume he is, he's still got that to come. He has a lot of burst damage. And yeah, as I said, whittling per turn is the important thing here. And just denying pressure as well from the Warlock, you see with the Psychic Scream. It's all going to have to be done from hand, though. He only had one card left in his deck. And he's going to have no minion pressure at all, as we can see. But, so it's going to be interesting to see if he's got quite enough to get there. With a three gain per turn, that negates the first ping of every single turn, plus some on top, of course. Yeah, he knows his cleric isn't going to be drawing any cards, so just instantly plays that. Maybe it can push oh. one damage. <laughs> just Nazoth into draw something else. The trouble with Nazoth is that means you're not using your hero power as the Warlock, and I feel like, yeah. I think what Ben was going to do that Toast was just counting how much he could do yeah. and just saving the time when he realized yeah. it wasn't enough. So maybe Toast did cut Mind Blast. I'm not sure. It's just, uh, I'm just sort of speculating here. But right, that's interesting. You said earlier he had to cut two things. Yeah, he had to cut something, yeah. People do fight the Mind Blasting occasionally, right? Yeah, especially if you're planning on countering aggro, it's very bad versus aggro, probably the lowest win rate card in your deck against any aggro deck. So a big, big win there for Ben, getting that Warlock out of the way, or so it seems, but the Priest will probably find a win anyway, the Warlock would probably have found a win anyway, so yep. in Conquest that's not quite, even though it's a massive percentage change, it doesn't actually affect the overall outcome that much, oddly yep. enough. Both lineups are not targeting Warlock and Priest. If they had a two ban, those would be the two decks you banned. Mm -hmm. It's the other decks, the Rogues, which both players are looking at beating here. It's just the fact that Toast has been leaving that Warlock up. You'd think that maybe he's got some form of answer that he thought he could be able to deal with it. And I guess maybe <laughs> that was Priest. the Priest. Yep. Yeah, so he's going to be <laughs> pretty aggrieved. But as you said, in the grand scheme of things, it might not matter too much. As Ben now moves over to his aggro druid, whereas Toast is going to continue on this Priest and hope to find a victory. And to be honest, against an aggro druid, sometimes you can just get battered down in the early game. You need that removal. Yeah, you're looking for that Pyromancer in particular in your opening hand, but Doomsayer is going to slow things down a bit as well, and Raza is a good way of just healing a lot through the course of the game, so I imagine he'll keep those two. 
Yeah, so there are early game board clears with Circle of Healing plus the Arcanist Soul Priest and then Wild <laughs> Pyromancer, and he has everything that, that he needs here. Um, would he have kept the Dragonfire had he not had the Doomsday there? Was that like a keep because he knows he's getting into turn yep. four quite easily? Definitely. He wants an answer for living mana huh. in his hand, and the Dragonfire Potion is that answer. Right. And a Potion of Madness as well to boot. Uh, all of the tools for Toast to deal with aggro. Similar to, we saw Mysterious, I think, earlier, who had the same kind of possibilities with yep. all of the anti-aggro tools. And it can be very painful when you are on the aggressive side, oh, when you're just God. facing clear after clear after clear. Yeah, I saw that game. I, I, I watched Mysterious get that opening hand at 2-2 and walked away for five minutes thinking it'd be over and came back and he's like, it was still going on. <laughs> yep. It's like, because he was just making sure he didn't make any mistakes and clearing up things as he went, I feel. Yeah, so Toast could coin out the Doomsayer here, deny any plays from Big Ben, but he wants to save this coin for the Pyromancer and then maybe play the Doomsayer later into his Wrath turn. So he's hoping that Big Ben spreads wide and then he can do that. Or he just plays Doomsayer here if Ben doesn't put enough pressure on the board. So Ben can kill this Doomsayer if he wants to use the Savage Roar. Is it worth it to preserve a 4-4? Four, four? Do you have to defend this board like this? Well, he doesn't have to use the Savage Roar. He could also use Mark of His Charge and Mark sure. of the Lotus. That gives him a 6-6. Six, six. Weak to Silence, weak to Death, but it's uh, but just a much bigger body, and he saves the Savage Roar for when he spreads wide. Okay, and that's where he's going to go with it, so... It's a big investment, but it's going to be a big reward as well, because now there is no answer for Toastmaster, who has the perfect answer to everything, but he's encouraged Ben to do something Ben wouldn't have done. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Ironically. Toast, going into it, was thinking, you don't, he need, Ben needed second mark of your charge and mark of the Lotus or patches there. Yeah, like captain into yeah. patches or something, to, whatever. To, to punish him, and that's what, that's what he had. So Toast was just going, I don't think you have it, and Ben had it, and that's sometimes how it goes. Toast very much punished here for not coining a Doomsayer. Did we see a silence last game from Toast Monster? I yes. We did see one? Yeah. So Ben knows that that is a possibility, but with it not being there for Toast, this is just so painful to have to just leave this 7-7 seven, seven up. Yep, so Ben knows that Toast kept two cards here, hasn't played them yet, might might try and do something around that, but he knows that one big HP, HP guy can't be answered, why not make another big HP guy? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, and also you can drop the 1-2, because you can't really area 1-2 when you're trying to deal with a 7-7. Seven, seven. It's kind of pointless. Yeah, so Toast has to work out how he can set this up. He can make do a Pyromancer turn here to set up for a Dragonfire potion next turn, potentially. Yeah. That's definitely a way to do it. I mean, there is a straight up just holy smite the raven. I hope he doesn't get what? buffed. That's terrifying. I think you're right. You have to set up the pyromancer because it can get buffed again. Yeah, he is worried that if he uses pyromancer now and dragonfire next turn, that's all the AOE's gone. And then living mana suddenly becomes a huge problem. He's seen some... These plays haven't really been weak from Big Ben. They've all made sense. There's no read Toast can really have on Ben's hand to say if there is or isn't a living mana at this stage. Yeah, and sometimes you just get to the point where you just have to hope it's not there. If, if everything's going wrong for you, you just have to live and see what happens next from like living from turn to turn almost. Yep. And we see the potion of mana here very strong, yeah. killing off the whole Crypt Lord here and setting up for the dragon fire. And that's a weird looking play to Ben. If he's on the ball, which he has been so far, he, sh he should pick up on that, right? That next turn, okay, he's got the AoE oil. I guess the only other thing is maybe if it's so drastic, he might think, oh, Toast is playing for his one out. Yes. But yeah, as, as I said before, Raza and Dragonfire kept in the opening hand. Yeah. So from Ben's point of view, these have to be, one of them has to be a Dragonfire, I would think. So therefore, no living mana here. He's just going to make some more minions on board. Just do enough to force Toast to actually have to bother in case he's got a death. Yep. That seems a... A motley bunch of things that need clearing up. Yeah, Ben's aware that death or science will be very strong, but he knows they haven't been played yet. They're going to have to be top deck or from visions. <laughs> <laughs> and so, as you know, this is where the living mana reads important, right? Because if you know he's got the living mana, you have to actually visions and take your chance. Yeah. So we saw a play here from Ben where he ends up floating mana. Now, from Toast wants to side, that's a key indication of cards like Savage or Living Mana, Cold or Creeper. <laughs> And he, but, but he just thinks there's too much pressure on board, can't do anything. He has Shadow Visions to get a Psychic Scream, but just sort of has to do the Dragonfire now or he's going to die. Yeah, he'll feel that he can Visions into death to deal with the Creeper at least. Yeah. So he'll be hoping that it's Creeper-oriented or rather than Living Mana-orientated, so... Yeah, definitely. 
<laughs> it's just, it's just so ugly. I mean, you could visions look for what, like Spirit Lash, but I still don't like it. Yeah, there's it's a really awkward situation here. We see 12 power on board. We've already seen the mark of the Lotus, so Toast won't be scared of any damage coming that out. So he can potentially it. just just stall for a turn here with the visions, heal up, go for Psychic Scream next turn, and then maybe hope to draw the DK or the or the Psychic Scream for real in this deck and stabilize that way. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there aren't great options at all here. He really wants to get that Lyra going, but no chance in the foreseeable future. Okay, so we're so I was saying Spirit Lash, but you're saying Psychic Scream. Now you can see both of them. What what do you think is the best decision? I I'm liking the Psychic Scream. The Spirit Lash is nice; it heals you up for a bit. But having used Wild Pyromancer already, the only card you can draw is the real Spirit Lash to finish off all of these, and therefore. That being a lot less, it's just very unlikely to draw it. So I like the Psychic Scream here. You're not dead on board. And maybe you can stabilize with some form of heal. He has great healing potion, remember. So if the board's clear, he can heal back up with some of his cards. Yeah, this is the, the turn where he knows that nothing's going to happen. You said there's only one mark in this deck usually. Oh, no, no we're only see, we've already seen one mark of yep. the Lotus. There's normally two, of course. Right, so but, but Toast isn't going to play around a second. He, he can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just clearing that one up, yeah, so <laughs> it could be there, but it's very unlikely. So he can set his opponent down to three. Toast goes down to three, can obviously heal himself back up. But it looks like Ben's actually thinking about taking this elemental, uh, Radiant Elemental off the board. And I guess it does make sense if you are worried about something like a Lyra, but... Yeah, he's he's trading here so he can play Cold or Cooper, I believe. Potentially. That, that's one thing that maybe, that maybe to trade, but then you are weak to Psychic Scream with that play. He doesn't have to play it this turn, though. He's just making his next turn potentially yeah. as well. He's also setting up a Savage Draw by trading as well. So he's saying to Toast, if you didn't hit that Psychic Scream, I'm going to Savage Draw you and kill you if, say, Toast hit Greater Healing Potion there to try and heal up and stabilize that way. The thing is, if he had set his opponent down to three, his opponent's then forced to Psychic Scream, then he has... Well, he has no mana. He would have had no mana, mana. so yeah. he so killed himself well. to get he some mana. Yeah. So he wants the mana back, so therefore he's playing around Psychic Scream to some extent by trading as well. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Ben's Otherwise, he just loses the game because yeah. he can't play anything at all. This way, he can play the things and have the mana. And that's worked out really nicely for him. That silence is just taunting Toast at this point. He's needed that a long time ago. Yeah, so Ben's seen cards like Raza from the start. Still might be confused about that card. What could it be? Then there's Lyra, probably Ben, have been in the hand for a long time. He could be scared of Anduin here and might try and play around it by not playing both the Corridor Creepers. We'll see what he does, though. And this is where how much practice you've put in really matters because it's not Anduin. It's never yeah. Anduin. It's, but I can see why you'd be terrified of it. Against somebody of Toast Monster's skill that isn't an Anduin, you'd mulligan that away to go for the faster start. Yep. But it's all about how much time Ben's put in. It's not going to matter too much anyway, but he is playing around it. And it could be one of those other cards in hand as well, of course. Yeah, he's also just making a wider board here for Savage Raw. General just makes sense. But Toast, another anti-aggro tool he put in his deck, the Tar Creeper, can just come in here very strong. That's the difference between life and death, potentially. So he's got to fend off this Savage Raw. But first of all, he's got to fend off what he can see. That's the problem. And then he's got to fend off the Savage Raw. He might be tempted just to Tar Creeper, Raza, heal up, which does keep him alive on board. But if he's worried about Savage Raw, then he knows he just dies. So with that play, I feel that he's got to work out, does Greater Healing Potion save me? If I clear up what I can see, it's, not, it's just stemming the tide for one turn. Then he's got to work mm -hmm. out, he's clearing this up and then drawing Healing Potion enough. Yeah, so Toast... We'll, we'll be fairly sure this card is like Savage Draw or Second Living Mana stuck in Ben's hand for a long time. I don't think there's a way around the Savage Draw killing him at all, so he might have to just hope that there's no Savage Draw and go for a different line here. Could you Tar Creeper, uh, Holy Smite, and heal up? Yeah, so he's doing what Boar said. He's just going to say, if you haven't got it, this is a board that is going to fight back. Yeah, if you Tar Creeper, Holy Smite, and heal up, you go to nine, and then you do, you do, you do survive then, yeah. But he's thinking, I c if I survive for one turn, what am I even doing on the next turn? Yeah, unfortunately, he doesn't find the way to survive. And the Savage Roll is going to push the final damage. Ben takes a 2-0 lead and is one game away then from the Grand Finals of the ESL Premiership. So a 2-0 position is a very advantageous position to be in. And he looks pretty calm and collected he in does. comparison to last season. It's just a different guy. Six months of hard work, hard practice and comfortable in his own abilities now, it makes a big difference, right? Yep. But 
he has Rogue left, and I think Toastmonster has five Galakas waiting for him. <laughs> yeah, we've seen a lot of Galakas already, and like you say, there's even more lurking. Is that something that Ben can play around, though? If he has that knowledge, he can just say, all right, is there a way I could just play these games, at least maybe the first game, without even putting a Pyro on the board? You've got that freedom. Yeah, definitely. Often, if I know my opponent's playing Galacticaller, I want to play Deck Hand, and therefore I can trail off the Deck Hand, trail off the patches. There's nothing for you to eat, and just avoid playing Swashburglar and Captain is what you try and do. Of course, sometimes you can't do that. And of course, Toast Monster, there's only two in his deck. Ben can sometimes just say, you have to have it. If you don't have it, I'm in a strong position. And of course, Rogue has strong plays like Prince, which is just going to win anyway. Yeah, I mean, Ben is in such a good position at the moment that just one of the three games he has to win. Of course, Toast Monster already being lower bracket as well. It doesn't matter the order that he plays these decks in. He just has to win all three. There's no reason to not reveal any cards or anything like that. So just playing something you're comfortable with, maybe getting a little bit of momentum behind you, that kind of thing. Yes. Into this is such a huge match because um, whoever goes to the final obviously gets that double yeah, life double in the final. Yep. I mean, you actually overcame that in season one. How how stressful is that? It looked pretty stressful. Yeah, it's it's always a difficult position to go into. It's almost often you can say it's nice being the underdog. No one expects you to win twice, so yep. it's nice that way. But obviously, you'd rather be the guy who has a life available to lose than the guy who has to win twice in the finals. You're talking to people who have improved on stage since their beginnings. You're another one of those guys who looked a little bit terrified first time on that big stage and now just doesn't look like they care. Yeah, so here we have Toast Monster. He obviously cut the Prince, plays Galaka and Eviscerate, and uh, Ben plays around that Galaka with the Firefly. I love that from Boar. Just yeah, we're, 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 we're not going to talk about how I was nervous yep. on stage. Instead, yep. I'm just going to talk about Hearthstone. <laughs> just, just move past that. <laughs> but thank you for, for backing but me it, up, Dan. It, it has been nice seeing a lot of these players in the UK yes. community kind of grow with the ESL Premiership and just seeing that obviously there are other UK tournaments that have also allowed that to happen as well. But this is one where you get on stage so many times. This is why I think this is the, the premier event in the UK because you get so many chances to go on that stage. All the guys here today have had two chances to go on stage, which will stand them in good stead in the future across all tournaments. Yeah, definitely. And we see an interesting turn here for Toast Monster. If he plays Captain, then he gets the patches buff, but the Captain could die, just backstab. You lose the buff on the patches then, but he's almost almost trying to bait Ben into playing his Captain to, right. to punish Toast Monster's Captain. Yeah, that Galaki Cooler needs food. But also, I mean, this does just build up your board at the same time. It's it's doing the dual purpose of being a bait, but actually a, a good one. And there's that backstab as well that you were just talking about. Yeah, a huge pickup here for, for Ben because this backstab activates a, a potential for a very large Edwin. And before Vastbind turn as well, that can stick around and just push a lot of damage. It does leave a Swashburglar on the board, though. It does leave something for the Galaka Crawler to nibble up, but I guess at least it's not a captain. Yep. He's like, you make a 3-4 Galaka, I've got myself, is it an 8-8 Edwin? At least. Yeah, good counting. And no backstab either for Toso. The is going to be two turns away, most likely, which is 16 points of ouch. It's going to be more turns away if he's using his Swashburglar and doesn't find anything that's actually going to be able to activate it, because now no activator even on turn six. Yeah, I imagine he's hopeful in his deck. He's got lots of draws which can activate the fast Spine. Playing with his deck a bit here rather than his hand and thinking, I will draw something. He also might be greedy here with the Galaka. Just play an SI here, try and get something bigger for the Galaka to eat. But I'm not sure if Ben will fall into a trap of playing. But we see, oh, he's hoping that the Swashburglar yeah. lives. And without playing Galaka, Ben might think there's no Galaka and then play a Captain. So he's trying to get an even larger meal for this Galaka Crawler. Larger meal, and also this is going to you know, do some damage to the Edwin at least. It's, yeah. gonna, it's not challenging it as such, but at least it's awkward looking, although so much going on in Ben's hand to just not worry about it. Yeah, that chain gang pickup means you can just chuck those taunts on the board and then send eight damage to face if you would like. Yeah, I imagine Ben, even though we, we, we know that there's no vast activator, it's going to be very scared of it happening and therefore will trade. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. One thing Ben has done actually really well in this match and in this tournament is not fall into like cheap traps. He's, he's really managed to get things going like that in this. Obviously, he made the mistake with the North Shire, that one thing, but yep. he admitted after that was just a little bit of lack of practice. All the rest of the time, he's just dodged all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and there we see what he dodged, the backstab pickup. 
And now this Vast Blind Slayer a lot weaker than it could have been. But the Zero Mana Cold Creeper, of course, very powerful. Does contest this 3-4. Right, and now it's thinking time for Ben. We've sort of done all the, not easy stuff, but all the, the fairly straightforward stuff. Now he's got to work out what his plan for the future is because this hand can develop several ways. And Keleseth, despite it being turn five, is still kind of relevant here. This could go on a while. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, Keleseth's definitely going to come down, right? 100% Keleseth. Why are you right? You're looking at me like, oh, that <laughs> has came to my be right hand side. He, uh, the, the big question for me is, are you going to shadow step it? And I think... The longer this game goes on, the more important that plus two, plus two is going to be on all of your minions. Yeah, he doesn't have a good Shadow Step target in his hand. There's no there's no Leroy for Burst, there's no Bone Mare, there's no Elven Minstrel. Yeah, so it makes a lot of sense to use it here. And this game, they're both on 27 on turn five. It might last a while, and all the buffs just help each bit. Yeah, the accumulative <laughs> sort of effect of those buffs over five or six turns, obviously, would be plus 10, plus 10, plus 12, plus 12. We'll have some of that going on. But it's usually on turn five, what I was saying a minute ago is like, it might only go two more turns, plus two, plus two, who cares? Oh, yeah. To die. yeah, and then the Deadly Fort picked up from the Swashburglar. Yeah. Yeah. SI just cleaning up the biggest threat. Now they're just fairly even on board. Toast Monster is hoping for a huge swing turn with Galactic Order Valspine coming up, and we'll see if Ben plays around that. Yeah, of course, Toast Monster now, the, the pressure is on him to do something because he can't outvalue Ben after that double Keleseth. <laughs> yeah, we'll just see what comes out of this swash. Ooh. So, of course, Cheap Death, that'll, that'll send potentially the Prince back to his hand or the SI or the swash, which are all cards which are good to go back to your hand. So I'd like to see that play dub. Also, it's really good with Chain Gang in the future. So he might hold it back, but he just he just go ahead and play the chain gang in the backstab for the most stuff on board, basically. Yeah, Rogue just doesn't, or the way that Rogue is currently built, Rogue does not possess a way to clear wide boards. It's more and more of a problem to the point where I was saying yesterday, I wonder if people were trying to find a way of putting something in their decks, like Blade Flummy, for instance, but something better than that will actually start doing some damage to these wide boards because it's becoming a problem. Yeah, and Toast Monster now, if he's been hand tracking, knows not to be scared of a Bone Mare here because Ben's hand is all just cards which have been produced from other sources. Yeah. So Toast can make some, it, he can maybe just use the Vast Bind here when otherwise you might have to hold it back for a Bone Mare. But the Vast Bind is also seeming weak. He could play a Sharp Fork. There's a Tar Creeper. Lots of lines here for Toast. Just touching on your point slightly, Lorinda, I, especially with the rise of Paladin, I was expecting more Fan of Knives to exist. Yeah. Uh, maybe in combination with like Thalnos or something, but. The Tempo Rogue deck is just so good. It's like, where? What do you take out? Yeah, you take it all out and play Miracle, but then exactly. you're lowering your deck strength. Yeah. So, yeah. But at some point, the tip will come where there are just too many wide decks. We, we won't be there yet, but if people keep getting more and more aggressive, someone's going to roll up with Miracle and just destroy everybody. Yeah, some sort of... It'll be, it'll be, it'll be interesting. I don't, maybe at Worlds, but we'll have to see what... They, they, they've put in a lot of practice. Maybe Fan of Knives is somehow in there against an anti-Paladin lineup. And it might be the, the George C strategy of put one in there to make sure they have to play around it even if you don't draw it because mm, yeah. it's open lists. Yeah. yeah, so here we see a deck hand. Might look small. 4-3, though, after that Prince Shire step earlier. All these, any minion is a, is a good draw for Ben at this stage. <laughs> yeah, 4-3 versus your opponent's 5-mana 3-4 that obviously kills it. But yeah, things the numbers are starting to stack in Ben's favor. He's 2-0 up already, and he, the winner goes to the grand final. It's looking really good. Yeah, so Toast held back his Galaka fast buying for next turn, hoping that Ben would just play one of these really big guys that he's got on his deck. <laughs> but Toast just can't find the vast buying slayer value that he's looking for. And we see the cheat death here set up for the Sour Knight Chain Gang. Ben, uh, Toast Monster can play around this though with the Galaka. Although it is a random secret, it could be evasion, it could be sudden betrayal as well. And he's getting so low on health, at some point you might have to say, <laughs> I have to vile spine something. <laughs> yep. I love the interaction between the players there as well. Just having a, a little giggle to each other just to say, Toast saying, what on earth is this secret? And Ben pointed to the, the sky <laughs> and just be yeah. like, oh, maybe God knows. <laughs> maybe Pavel knows. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he does. That was hilarious. <laughs> so, this would be the perfect time to bluff Cheap Death if you had it in hand. So Toast Monster, oh, he's always going for the, yep. <laughs> Swashburglar does provide just potentially more damage for Ben as well. And he is so close, especially with that head crack available as well each turn if he wants to. Like, he's putting him on, what, like a four-turn timer? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it can change quickly. I mean, if Toast can draw a wide board. That is a huge pickup, though, for Ben, that Minch draw. Of course, it's buffed itself and oh. drawing two buff minions. Oh, Deadly Poison as well. We're getting really close yeah. to two-turn lethal now. 
That's a lot of burst. And Ben's yeah. just got to organise. He's going to take a minute to make sure he doesn't mess this up. Basically, he can he can he can kill Toes next turn. He just yeah. set up to make sure how he can play get that so right. Deadly poison into Headcrack now, and then you've got SI Seven Agent and Headcrack next turn with the, the elements as well. Yeah, he's got to think. Could Toast Monster have a Shadow Step and the Leroy Jenkins? How much damage is this? That would be twelve. That still wouldn't be enough. So I imagine to yeah. see poison plus Headcrack here. Yeah. And the only reason he took so long, I think, is because he's wasting one of the poison charges. You want to make sure is that okay to waste it? Yeah. Like, and think and double think and triple think. I'm wasting two damage here if it did go longer. And we'd need something miraculous, like a Yogg-Saron, for any chance for Toast <laughs> to even do anything this game. But it's not there, and that means Big Ben is going to be the player who is going to move forward to the Grand Final with a 3-0 as well. What a way to go into the Grand Final. Yeah. That is certainly a way to intimidate your opponent who's going to be facing you later. And you can see it on Ben's yeah. face. He knows now he's set it up for it perfectly, and he's going to be very happy about that. Before. Yeah, and he gets to sit back for three or four hours and watch everybody scrap it out. and. I know he sat next to me, but with Boar missing from that scrap, that is going to be, you know, the one who comes through all that is going to be pretty tired by the end of it, especially if it's Dan who's got to go through right from the bottom all the way up to the top. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's so many games to win in that loser bracket, and quite rightly, a massive smile on Ben's face. A, a small celebration, not a Dan SWF uh, <laughs> celebration, <laughs> a more subtle one, and a tiny bit of...